My name is Leszek Pavlovich. Um, I'm living in Flagstaff, Arizona, where I've been for about mm, 16, 17 years now. Well, it was a long time ago, but it was very, very intimidating. I had no idea of how I was going to do on the show. The, the one thing I was hoping for was that I wouldn't embarrass myself, but I wasn't even sure that that was the case. So it was, it was a scary moment. It's definitely a, a very different experience from what we get in, in any other facet of real life, but it was pretty much the way that I thought it was going to be. You know, a bunch of people coming together and you know, competing against each other. I was a material scientist working for a semiconductor company, and um, I wound up being an archaeologist up in Flagstaff, Arizona. And um, one of the reasons I moved there, or that I was able to move there, was because I went on Jeopardy, and that gave me the freedom to go off and find a different career from the one that I had when I was first on the show. I was there, I think the first, uh, the second week of taping in 1991 where they just switched to a new set. And on traditional buzzers, there's a lockout where if you keep on pushing the button over and over again, you lock yourself out. So you have to time yourself exactly to get in at the right moment. And they came up to us and said, oh, well our buzzers aren't really working right now, so we want you to just keep on buzzing continuously. And I was like, oh, sweet. <laughs> You know, because I was playing a lot of video games at the time, so I had really good buzzer reflexes. And as soon as I figured out, oh yeah, just just buzz like crazy, um, I really, you know, I mean, that, that was the real key for me winning five games in a row. Because it would take like one half of a game for the other contestants to realize, oh, we should be doing that. And then I still had the speed and I also had a fair, the knowledge as well, too, to back it up. And so I was usually able to cruise ahead and... Um, and, and beat them that way. They went back to the original system for the Tournament of Champions where you had to buzz in at the right time, and I did okay on that one, I think. So, um, uh, it, but the buzzer is always the killer, because you, you, know, you watch the show and you can see all three of the contestants know most of the answers. And that's true for the regular show, for the, this Battle of the Decades where you're bringing back the best, yeah, all of us are gonna know most of the answers. So it's gonna be a question of who gets the buzzer timing right. When I saw this episode on TV, it was, oh my God, did I really have my tie so badly skewed off to the side? The only time I wear uh, ties are for weddings and for game shows. And so I don't get a lot of practice on that. In fact, I, I had to go onto YouTube and look up a, a video on how to tie a tie because I'd already forgotten how to do it. Because the last time that I was on a game, uh, wore a tie was for Jeopardy back in 2005 for the Ultimate Tournament. The other thing that I remember when I was watching the show, um, or was on the show, was I bet enough so that if he had bet everything and, and he had gotten it right and I had gotten it wrong, we would have tied and he would have gone on to be a champion. And I was kind of disappointed that he hadn't just gone ahead and bet everything. That was good. It's like, yeah, I'm coming back for the Tournament of Champions. That's pretty awesome.